I'm with you, bro. Let's just do this. I don't know why, but whenever you drink, you 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 become uh, uh, Midwestern, like Michigan. What? Oh, well, f- I'm moving there anyway, so I guess that'll fit right in. But what do you mean? Hey, dude. Uh, hey, hey, do, yeah, are you hearing? Wait, hey, <laughs> hey, I'm not. No, not. Are you hearing an accent? Is something going on there? A, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wonder. Only happens you, when you're drinking. I think it's the vodka. Well, you know the pl- <laughs> plus side. Um, I can go sober after I move, and I'll probably still start talking that way because that's where I'm moving. We'll see. We'll <laughs> see. Anyway. Uh, well, Nick, I guess as, as good a time as any. I'm going to hopefully click the right intro this time. You ready? It's the one with the stuff. With the stuff. All right. Welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials, covering film, TV, video games, and comic books, and this week is an exception, my friends. We're covering all three. Uh, Cue in the crickets. Feels a little casual in here. Sorry for the ASMR moment, friends, but... Oh, did you just now unmute? Are you, can you hear me now, Nick? I can hear you. I can oh, hear you. oh, thank God. I wasn't sure. I was uh, making sure you could hear me when I could talk. Oh, completely. Thank you for making sure connections are all clear. All pathways are present. Guys, uh, I already said it. So, guys, I am your host tonight, uh, one of two, Joe Tweeten, and I'm joined by a deep... Not dearly departed, still here in all his affluence, ready to co-op at a moment's notice. I still have yet to see that. God dang it. But I present to you tonight, my friends, f***ing Nick Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you, like, you like that upfront vulgarity i was i was i was trying to catch you off guard just a little bit you dropped the f-bomb we've now gone into pg-13 um, uh no 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 i uh i do sit through all of our bullshit every week and edit appropriately <laughs> <laughs> anyone who's familiar with our Bing. Bing. Uh, long lost host Bing. we won't say long lost it hasn't been long but they're lost and they're not here tonight um Shout out to our two comrades who hopefully I will tag them so that they watch at least the intro so they can see the nice little post edit I put in credits. Hope you guys liked it. That nice little stamp of not here. Kidding. I'm not going to be that straightforward or vulgar, but uh, rest. uh, Sorry you're not here. Ryan Kuhn. And we miss you a bunch, my soulless ginger, Matt Johnson. I, they're both gone this week. Too, too personal. The absence is felt. Um, Predicaments. Yeah. There, there is a few topics we want to discuss, but we are waiting till we have the whole crew to discuss. But, but and unfortunately, Nick, it's putting these big topics further on the back burner. Way. To grind the grease into that back burner, Nick. I I hope you like my analogy there. But, dear listeners, we won't skimp on coverage and we won't skimp on the mentioning of various coverage. The depth at which we achieve that coverage will be a little shallow tonight in this waiting pool that me and Nick are wading through. As long as they think it's six inches, that's all that matters. You know what? An uh, a- average waiting pool is six inches, Nick. So I hope everyone out there knows that. Get out your measuring sticks. It's there. But <laughs> needless to say, we will be covering the whole variety. Uh, uh, due to staffing and research staff. Staffing. 
I know. I act like we're a corporation every week, Nick. I act like we got this full team. Nope, it's just me and Nick. Me and Nick and sometimes a couple others. Uh, we There's no research team. It's all our own. I'd like to think we have a research team like Philip DeFranco. But, uh, no, Philip DeFranco? Wait, did I just say that? You did. Oh, that was weird, but oddly accurate. <sighs> We we are going to be working on trying to get some more people to. We're going to try. Join we, us and get Nick, some we talked about there. rotating. We talked about rotating. Rotate. Damn it! Splitting over my words. Blech. I have actually rotating chair. Rotating yeah. chair of voices. We we had someone here a while back, and I've reached out and talked to him and seen if he's interested in possibly joining. And he is. I've got two guesses. Uh, Hold on. Can I guess? I got two. I got one that you mentioned a couple episodes back, if you recall. Uh, Lumberjack Sexy or no? He will probably never come back on the Ah, shit. Sorry, whoever you were out there. (laughs) Wait, what was it? A lumber snack? snack? (laughs) Anyway. Oh, my second guess. A man by the name of Tyler? Yes. Ah, I got it right this time. I screwed it up during our Snyder Cut conversation with Paul Roman and other guests. I say other guests because, well, you had cardboard cutouts, Nick, behind your back of all of us. So that was creepy enough. Kidding. It was good, though. Go check it out. Hour and 40 minutes of talk about an amazing, amazing, dark DC film. From one of our favorite directors in question, Zack Snyder. But uh, that's not neither here nor there. I'm excited, Nick. Keep talking to him. I would love to have him on rotating, regular or otherwise. Yeah, um, I'm hoping to get him in here because he's been doing a lot of indie gaming. Yeah. What, All the uh, cheap indie games that come out, he tries to pick up. So that'll give us some more content. So, I yeah. would love to hear his voice on that stuff because I touch a variety of indie stuff on Game Pass, but I'm sure he's got an even more extensive reach when it comes to indie anything, especially with games and other content like that. So, so Tyler, you've been called out. You've been called out, sir. Yes, <laughs> so, uh, Nicholas. It's you oh, and sure. me. It's you and me tonight, sir. It's you and me, and me and you. Oh, oh. copyright, sir. We can't. We. I don't. We don't have the money. I said to it pay backwards. I, oh, you did. You did. Yeah. Spot on, sir. What I want to throw out there, just a couple teases for <laughs> upcoming episodes. Um, we we are not unaware of current events especially current releases, uh, one of being which Matt Reeves is the Batman with Robert Pattinson. Bastards. Now, I, what I'm saying, Nick, is that despite anyone's uh, either perceived opinion or they just saw it, and that's their opinion, we're going to wait another week. I'm trying to get in <clears throat> to a theater showtime and check it out at some point. And um, when at least a couple of us can go to see it we will review it and talk about it i'll be able to watch it once i can get enough cheap russian vodka to make <laughs> myself blind of it oh wait that's not gonna happen it's banned in oregon uh damn what a cold sell sir and it, uh, on your uh offerings but regardless We know that's there, but guys, what we are going to cover tonight is usually what we have been doing is a full episode of movie, full episode TV, full episode gaming. Due to staffing problems and personal schedules, I know. What? Again, staffing. Uh, Who the hell is getting paid? No one. Sorry. Due to volunteer issues, (laughs) I guess I'm going to say it that way, Uh, it's just going to be me and Nick. And uh, we so have feel left out. Hey, we you know what you and me have procured a variety of topics to cover, and it happens to cover all three in our gamut of conversations. So, uh, Nick, I want to lay one thing out there. We're just gonna do the quickest and most bestest of housekeeping right now, guys. If you're listening right now or watching, that's right. We're in two forms of media on the internet 
This is a podcast, first and foremost. And because of that, you can find us wherever major podcast subscriptions are. Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, Google Nerdentials Podcast, and you will find our show. Now, if you're not on the road, you happen to be home and you're surfing through YouTube, we're there too at Nerdentials Podcast on YouTube. We recently separated our mother channel because we got into a lot of gaming shenanigans, I'm going to be honest, and that kept growing on its own. And because YouTube likes specific content, we decided, well, our pop culture talk needs to be on a separate channel from our video game stuff and although we talk video game news on our podcast our main channel nerdentials gaming has all the gaming you could ever want co-ops let's plays walkthroughs first looks and the podcast and all its glory including movie trailer reactions reviews and otherwise are on nerdentials podcast no matter how you look at it nick if everyone googles nerdentials they'll find all of it right mm-hmm and but where can they find it all in one place? All in one place. Oh, shoot. If you want the social media links and all that content, video or otherwise, including other written reviews and written material, and you're into reading, I dare say I suggest they go to nerdentialsmedia.com. Dot com. That's right, guys. Look at the splurgy words at the bottom as they scroll across the screen. Nerdentialsmedia.com. Everywhere our content can be found. <clears throat> but Nick, without further ado, I think that since just you and me, we should we need to jump right in, dude. We need to get right into the meat and potatoes of our nightly, well, sorry, <clears throat> weekly conversations. First up, my friends, uh, we're going to jump into, if you will, movie matters. <laughs> Welcome to Movie Matters, friends. Guys, we don't have any major news topics this week. Although I know a lot's going on in the industry, we will save it for a follow-up week. Today, or this week in Movie Matters, we are going to talk back and forth, me and Nick, about a couple films recently viewed, of which I sadly have been investing a lot in something along more of the gaming bits section of our episode tonight, which is where my lack of time to watch films has been. But Nick has assured me he has a couple, nay, at least a couple to talk about, maybe one surprise. So... Guys, here we are. Let's discuss and review and converse about some films, Mr. Nick. What is the first one up for bid from you, sir? What, nay, are you going to talk about? Movie, TV? We're on movie. Movie matters. Movies, yeah. movies, sir. Yeah, we're yes, on movies first. Um, movie matters. Uh, both Netflix, no, both uh, Hulu and... Uh, HBO Max dropped it uh, recently. Um, it is the prequel to a, a series of movies, very James Bondish, and spy movieish. Uh, this one is Sorry. a prequel to both of them um, by quite a big margin. This is the inception of the program originally. This is a movie called The Kingsman. Ooh, I'm a, wait, so what is it primarily on right now? What where can we see it right now? Uh, you can see it both on uh, Hulu and HBO Max. Ooh, all right, yeah, no reason not to watch it. I'm excited about that. Yeah. Tell us about it. Give us a little rundown, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, the Kingsman stars uh, the Fines. What's his name? Ooh, sorry, Ralph 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 Fiennes. Ralph Fiennes, 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 yeah, starring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, um, as uh, Orlando Oxford, he's the original founder of the the Kingsman. Um, 
This also happens to be during World War One. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So um, you, it, it says in early years of the 20th century, the Kingsman Agency is formed to stand against the cabal, fighting <clears throat> a war to wipe out millions. Ooh. Um, um, I thought it was done very well. I loved it. It was very. Uh, um, it they they kicked up the the bloodiness and the the visceralness for it. Um, and there's still a lot of comedy, even though it's it's more towards the World War One era. Um, you got a lot yeah, of good yeah. action to it. Um, it kind of lets you know where everything started, um, and the reason why um, the Kingsmen were were formed. You you, you kind of had an idea for, of it from the, the the other two movies, but this one kind of went more in depth to it, and it was it was really good. Um, uh, as you saw earlier, the guy with the long hair and the the gown. Um, yeah, I was, it was about? really cool to uh, see um, uh, Grigory Rasputin as a villain in an actual movie. <laughs> Dude, um, d- I j- just out of curiosity, does it maintain or have any humor in it uh, like the previous I, titles? Yeah, I just said they they kept some humor on it. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. So what I'm hearing is you're not listening. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm multitasking at the moment, sir. No, I, <laughs> I may uh, add that in post. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to throw in a whole bunch of uh, uh, things that happen in it, but there's quite a bit of humor still in it. Um, the it's it's more dry British humor. I enjoy here, it here and there. Dry Brit. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. Um, well, because the Kingsman is a is a British agency. Yeah, I. That's the other thing is like I mean, 007 and MI6 uh, well originates in kind of in that same quarter of the of the world. Um, what's your uh, what's your rating on this one, sir? What's the recommendation level? Um, I I, I love the movie. Um, I've watched it three times since it came out because it's pretty good. Um, Nick, I'd I like do to- like the other ones better, but I'll give this one a seven five. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. So you guys, um, no discredit to Nick's number review versus times watched. He's just he just loves watching uh, movies in general, and when they're good, no, no, no. This is no, no. This is not a down to you, sir. But oh, like, when you love a movie, you watch it multiple times, and a seven five still comes out of you watching it three times. Yes. Even though I watched it three times, you get to seven, five. Um, that just means you, you had a lot of uh, evaluation under your belt. You, you were able to see it, re-see it, expect what you're about to see and still enjoyed it. Am I right? I mean, mm-hmm. right. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. It's a little over two hours. And uh, it looks fun, dude. Uh, it's a no. It's directed by Matthew Vaughn, mm-hmm. and I like a lot of stuff he's done. Lock, stock, and two smoking barrels. Snatch, kick ass. Um, and I he he's even attributed as doing um uh, like Layer Cake from two thousand four, Stardust, and even X Men First Class. Which honestly, I liked the fresh take. Uh, with his X Men, um, but I'm very curious to see his his run on this one for sure, yeah, dude. It was a good job. It was good. Uh, I, I know it's gonna feel a little short winded for some of this because Nick's the only one reviewing guys. But um, I yeah, normally if I have someone to bounce stuff off of, we can go a little bit deeper. Wait, say that again. But usually, if I have people to bounce this uh, stuff yes, off of, yes, yes, I know, I know. Jab, jab, stab, darn you! But I'm trying to keep this very uh, <laughs> sorry. That's not what I meant. Unspoiled, <laughs> so people can actually still enjoy it. No, I know you're right, dude. Yeah, um, but if you like the other Kingsman movies, I would definitely say watch this one. It enriches the lore. All right, dude. Uh, upon that recommendation and the fact that it's available on two major streaming services, what Hulu and HBO Max, mm-hmm. um, that's an that's an easy press play option for a lot of people out there. So, right on, dude. Okay, you have at least one more that we 
talked about off air, and then I think you said, is there a third surprise coming? Yes. Yes. Okay. So this well, one we talked about before. Um, save that one for last. What's this one? Okay. This one is uh, um, Hotel Transylvania 4. Transformania. Oh. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Ooh, Andy Sandberg. Yeah, this is number four in the series of Hotel Transylvania, uh, piloted with uh, Kevin Hart and uh, Adam Sandler. Um, I, 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 I really enjoyed it. The kids enjoyed it. The humor was spot on. Um, but something was nagging me the entire time, and I'm like, why is this so different? Why, why? And then I realized it. It doesn't have Adam Sandler voicing Drac anymore. Oh shoot! Yeah, but the the actor who took his place <laughs> was oh. really close. Oh, that you're right. I like I like him though. I yeah, like but, this guy. He's been done that. Oh, holy crap! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this is this a guy we've seen on YouTube? Doing yeah. Disney voices, yes, and he does impeccable freaking Winnie the Pooh. That's, that's exactly what it is. Oh my gosh, guys, go look him up on YouTube. But uh, this is Brian Hull. Yep. Uh, now, um, if you're wondering where you can watch this, um, this was actually written to uh, stream one and only place, Prime Video. Uh, it so. It's on Prime if you have a subscription. Yep. Right. Okay. So, like, yeah, my girls have been, uh, well, specifically my middle kid, she loves the whole franchise and she's been waiting for this one. Um, that's hilarious, dude. I, yep. I'm going to go in there blind. I'm going to close my eyes and try to, when he talks, I'm going to try to see. Cause yeah, Adam Sandler is pretty impeccable. Like, he's got a very unique voice, but I, that's nuts. They got someone else. But Brian Hole, I don't know how well he's honestly known in Hollywood, but if you guys look up YouTube, search him, he goes to Disneyland and talks to the, the people that work at Disneyland. He talks to them in the Disney voices, and he often causes a lot of the princesses who are actors at Disneyland. Sorry, children, didn't mean to break the magic. <laughs> but, like... He causes them often to almost break character because he just blows them away with his whimsical. Like he's kind of he reminds me of um of uh, the guy the the uh, Jim uh, nerd card being pulled away uh, that does uh, original Winnie the Pooh and has done for a long time. Mm. Um, hold on, let me. I gotta pull it up real quick. Uh, Jim Cummings. Jim Cummings has been around for a very long time. He does Tigger, Winnie the Pooh, and Piglet, and uh, I think he even does Eeyore. He almost does all the characters. That guy is multi-talented, and Brian Hull, I would I would dare say, is the next Jim Cummings when it comes to like character voice acting. And the fact that he was in Hotel Transylvania, that's freaking awesome. Next alongside Andy Samberg and Selena Gomez. Uh, there's even Jim Gaffigan, Steve Buscemi, uh, David Spade. Uh, a lot of huge com- comedic heavy hitters are in here with their voices. And uh, this guy who's not uh, not widely known in Hollywood uh, is, has been brought in for doing this. I'm really excited to see what he does in the future. But also my kids are, sorry, adult nerding here. But like my kids are more excited about this movie than I am. Uh, but I, I can't wait to see what else he does. Um, what's what's your sorry for going on a tangent, Nick? Uh, did you have anything else to say about it other than your rating, sir? Um, <clears throat> yeah, um, I was going to give a quick uh, uh, plot for you. Okay. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Let, yeah. Yeah, well, how, yeah. All right. That's After it. one experiment, Johnny turns into a monster, and everyone else becomes human. Now it has to be seen whether they will be able to reverse this experiment. <laughs> I, I love the previous films, honestly. It's yeah. like a guilty pleasure. If you haven't seen the trailer for this, I would definitely say watch it. It's actually quite humorous, and uh, it kind of just leads exactly there, so you kind of get an idea of everything going on. Um, 
But uh, no, uh, I I really enjoyed it. Um, it was really humorous. The kids loved it. Um, they tied in a lot of stuff from the old movies, and kind That's of just cool. the next progression in the life of the characters. Um, it because of how much it threw me off knowing that it was not Adam Sandler and hearing that it wasn't Adam Sandler. But it sounded similar. It still? sounded similar. It sounded that's, similar. that's that's funny. That's crazy. Um, yeah. I I I, I got to give this a seven five, <clears throat> which is still decent. Oh yeah, no, it's a good, a, it's still a good recommendation. If you got kids and you've watched any other ones, watch this. It's definitely worth it. It's another addition. Yep. All right, sir. Uh, moving on, you have, and I'll be looking up some stuff in real time, friends. Uh, you have a third entry in your surprise review. A sneak attack movie. Oh, sorry. Oh, shoot. All right. Yeah. This this movie um, stars um, Ryan Reynolds, Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, I was like, it's not Selma out Hayek. Anymore. I was like, the one I'm looking for. And okay. Antonio Vanderas. What? And Morgan Freeman. Oh, shoot. Uh, this is the sequel to a movie that came out a uh, year before last. Oh. The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Uh, it's a, it's right there, and it's available on streaming. Like, wh- wh- Where did you watch it real quick before you get into it? I, I watched it on HBO Max, I'm pretty sure. Hot damn! I I'm pretty sure I knew that. Okay, yeah. good. let's talk about it, dude. Let's talk about it. Um, it leaves off after uh, our our boy Michael Bryce. His world has been destroyed by everything that happened in the first movie. Helping out uh, Darius Kincaid, um, who is Morgan, uh, who is a uh, um, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, but he's trying to regain his status as a bodyguard. And he goes through this whole process where he's like, you know what? I'm done with everything. I'm going to try to do this the right way. And then they come to him for help and just bring chaos with them. Um, the The inclusion of uh, uh, Selma Hayek was amazing. She's, she's still drop dead gorgeous and yeah. looks like she hasn't <laughs> aged a day in the last 20 years. Um, right. <laughs> um but no it was the the chemistry between all three of them together was just hilarious i i loved every second of it um well actually all four of them uh having uh antonio banderas on the in there in there too on this this movie was really good <laughs> yeah i saw that yeah saw him in that you you don't see him as a sinister bad guy nearly enough ah uh, that's um, true but I, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. His character kind of gave me the feels of him playing his character from uh, um, Spy Kids. Oh, oh, yeah, he is in that. <laughs> he had that cheesy kind of a. Uh, yeah. Of talking. Yeah. Yeah. No. Nah, um. But no, it was. I I really enjoyed it. Um. A lot of lot of good action. A lot of good funny moments because it's. Whoever thought of putting uh, Ryan Reynolds and Samuel Jackson in the same room to make a movie? Comic dude, genius. I just the trailer makes it makes it make sense, dude. And yeah, uh, Samuel Jackson can can definitely be funny when given the right material. And uh, we all have a solid heart heart. Sorry, heart. Of gold for Ryan Reynolds. Well, yeah, no, no, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. Um, no, and and the funniest part about it is Ryan Reynolds in the movie isn't trying to be funny. He's, yeah. he's acting That's as crazy. serious and as straight cut as possible. And Damn. the funny thing is, is the situations they get into. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the funny thing is a byproduct of of him talking, even in serious moments. Uh, he just has a, a charismatic way of s- selling humor through serious moments. And I, I always enjoy that about him, especially uh, when we talk about Free Guy, uh, Deadpool, his up 
upcoming film, Project Adam, mm -hmm. that we did a trailer reaction on. That. Yep. Uh, that's coming in just a few days, guys. That's like next yeah. weekend. It's the 6th right now that we're recording. It comes out March 11th for you guys. All right, sorry, The Adam Project. Um, this one, I'm excited about it. It came out uh, towards the end of last year. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the uh, the bodyguard or the wife's bodyguard. What is it? Uh, Hitman's wife's, Hitman's wife's bodyguard. bodyguard. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Now you you brought up Free that's Guy. Right. Um, that's another one. If you guys haven't been able to see it, it is now dropped on multiple different platforms. It's oh, uh, I'm pretty sure I, it's even on Disney Plus. I wanted to mention this la uh, last week when I heard about it because I saw I was uh, my Xbox is on, and I get advertisements for different things on on apps that I have, and it said now streaming on HBO Max and Disney Plus, and I was like. Yeah. At first, at first, at first, because then I was like, okay, I need to look up an article. Like, why? And I'm late to the game because this was announced late last year that it was coming to Disney Plus and HBO Max. Like, it had, it had been announced, and I was just late to the game of knowing that. Um, turns out, didn't know this, but prior to the acquisition of Fox, Free Guy was produced under 20th Century Fox prior to the acquisition. And it was delayed upon release, which is why it took so long until now to finally drop on Disney+. Plus. Now, honestly, guys, it's, while there's a little bit of violence, it is pretty family-friendly. Uh, and it's just, it blows my mind that it's available on Disney+. Plus. Uh, but also, it's on HBO Max. They had like a, a multi-deal thing with Warner Brothers. And so it's on both, or whichever one you guys have. And it was um, one of my favorite movies of last year. Yeah, I would say for me, uh, uh, it's hard to give uh, with comedies. It's hard to say, oh, it's Oscar worthy, but holy shit, I give it a solid nine out of ten for my personal enjoyment, dude. Uh, what would you yep. say on that? Just as a freebie rating, because we never covered it before. What would I say? Um, I would paraphrase Chris Evans. What the shit? Um, <laughs> as it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, also, and I'd, I'd give I'd, I'd, I'd give that one a ten. So. Yeah, I'll, right on, dude. And although we're not we're not covering it, just a little side note: Taika Waititi plays a hilarious nerdy game developer villain, mm -hmm. um, circa Grandma's Boy. Uh, if anyone's ever seen that one, that's another high recommendation film with a similar well back to idea. Hit. <laughs> Hit, Hitman's wife's bodyguard. I yeah, sorry, let's wrap that up. You didn't read um, that. Sorry. I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, there's comedy gold. Um, I couldn't stop laughing the entire time. And then there's there's things that happen that make you cringe. Like ow. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> it's it's good. Uh, I'm gonna give that one an eight five. Um, I I I'm gonna watch it again now. Talking about it, it's probably what I'm gonna turn on the TV as I'm trying to go to bed. Um. So, yeah, dude, I will. I'll absolutely be checking that one out. No, it, it was good. It was good. Right on, dude. All right, friends. We reviewed three semi four films in our movie matters uh, this week. Uh, all decent recommendations, according to Nick. Uh, and I, I vouch for the free guy. A movie, another high recommendation coming from both of us. Um, but without further ado, my sir, uh, I think we need to do a little bit of what we all like to call TV talk. <laughs> Welcome to TV Talk, my friends. Getting a little faster, a little better with the transitions. Hope you guys appreciate that. If you guys are watching on YouTube, you'll notice those transitions. If not, it'll just seem like a seamless podcast experience. <sighs> that being said, uh, in TV Talk, again, um, a lot of news out there, I'm sure. We could cover and will in the following week. But we've got a lot of crap, a lot of good crap, a lot of golden crap to review and suggest for your viewing pleasure. That being said, Nick, I think 
I'm going to toss it back to you just to kick this off with your the first show that you'd like to review, sir. Uh, lay one on me real quick. Uh, not quick, however gently you'd like to lay it on me. Lay My on. first show I'd like to cover was dropped on February 25th on Netflix. Um, this is the spiritual successor to uh, uh, the hit show by Ames by the History Channel, right? Uh, Vikings. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, spinoff sequel ish. Mm-hmm. Vikings. Um, yeah, this is Vikings Valhalla. Um, yeah, this actually go. follows up 100 years after the the everything that happened with. Um, Oh dang! I'll be careful about what I show. It might be a little risque, you know what I'm saying? With uh, Ragnar, <laughs> Lothbrok, and all them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one actually is. I, I loved every second of it. I I do medieval reenactment, and I like some of the, the liberties they took with it, and then the the way they just leaned into a lot of the 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 history. And uh, you get to see some cool things during the movie that you, how, you wouldn't have realized. Not to interrupt you, but mm-hmm. how brutal is it? Because I've heard people say they love bloody realism. Oh, and no. I, this is bloody, bloody realism. You, like you I don't, see people's I heads didn't want, chopped off. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, all right, all right, yeah. Super, yeah, a, adult on the, on the the violence. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, but it's 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 not gratuitous. It's 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 like what you'd see in a war. Elegantly placed. Yeah. Violence. Okay. Um, uh, the fight scenes are well choreographed. The cinematography of the whole uh, show was done very well. Um, the the accents of the characters were even researched very well um, to give that uh, um, that old world feel. You get a lot of the um, where you see the lords and the jarls and stuff of the Viking culture. You actually get to see. You can tell the difference that who they are because, like the furs they're wearing, the thing, the things they're doing, the the markings on their face. It actually harkens back to historical accuracy. It's not the most accurate, of course. But, sure, there's um, mild embellishment in yeah. these series. But I really loved it. Um, this one, instead of uh, Ragnar being our uh, center of our attention, it brings back a name uh, that's well known in history. Um, the main character in this is Leif Erikson. Oh, oh, I'm only so familiar with this because we've t- I've done uh, homeschool with my girls at. Uh, yeah. uh, a few different times and Leif Erikson was one of uh remind me what's the tale um what's his role in the finding of the new world I think there's some kind of correlation there he was just known as one of the the one of the greater sale sellers of uh, Vikings um, yeah 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 sorry I wasn't trying to pin a history lesson on you or anything yeah. I just I was like oh yeah Leif Erikson was one of the, <clears throat> sorry, one of the earlier, um, yeah, no, like we're nerds with fiction, but maybe not necessarily in history, but like Leif Erikson was definitely like based on a real world character. <clears throat> sorry, yeah, he, he was actually considered the first uh, European to set foot on North America. That's what it is. It's, it's that whole um, often often confounded or argued with our past generation versus what kids are learning now is like, Oh, Columbus was the first to set on the new land. And like, that's not a hundred percent true. Um, Mm -hmm. and there were absolutely other groups that did land first Leif Erikson being among some of them. Um, but that's, that's an interesting angle, sir, that an entire series, especially based on a, a very, well-received original series about Vikings to kind of taper off into that direction. Um, What what else do you want to say about it? Or or do you want to rate it? Um, (laughs) I am ready for season two. Um, If they're going to go do a season two, which they should, where they left it off, it leaves it at a point where they can. 
How many episodes um, do we have on this? Oh, let me find out. Uh, I think there's look. eight episodes. That's not bad. Are they close to an hour, probably? 50 yeah. minutes to an hour? I think they're 50 minutes to an hour each. But, nice. Uh, no, like, uh, yeah, it's it's really well done, though. It's, I really liked it. Um, now, there's a lot of reviews going around right now um, that people are saying the show's too woke um, because some of the stuff they touch and stuff like that. Yeah, speak no, they, on that. They, uh, they dig deep into that time era. And during this time, there was there was multiple things going on. Experimentation, um, probably. The, no, I mean, uh, the the Normans, the, the, the Europeans the Englanders, London, were trying to get rid of the Vikings from their lands. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, and this covers some uh, some very historical things that happened then that, about horrible atrocities done to the Viking people. Um, there's also something else happened here. When the Vikings became part of Europe, Europe and were mingling with the europeans they a lot of them adopted the the catholic christian religion okay so yeah in this you will find that there is a very brutal very brutal uh way that they describe the 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 christian vikings uh feelings towards <clears throat> the the pagan vikings um and Honestly, I'm glad they went that way. And with how brutal it is, even as a Christian, they they paint the the Christians to be like villains. Um, but when you think about it, in that time, they were very almost like burn them at the stake. They're witches, oh, people. Yeah. Like that. Well, uh, um, real quick, um, just if we have any slightly well younger listeners by chance, hopefully you guys are all adults 18 or older but you know because we are an explicit podcast but i just wanted to throw out the um the webster dictionary definition of woke because it's a thing now and i've heard a lot of people reference it especially people in their late 30s and 40s um it simply means that you are alert to injustice in society especially racism um, and I, I know woke can also be with that definition be thrown into many categories, including religion, um, fads, popularity, particular issues, or whatever the stigma is for our generation. So I just wanted to give weight to you, Nick. What did you mean by the sh some people are thinking the show is woke versus what it's trying to portray? Uh, what are people saying about it? Because I well, haven't read anything about it. One one big thing about it, um, if you could kindly throw in that warning. Spoiler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you gotta say the Nick. You gotta say the word. Say it right now. Spoiler warning. <laughs> warning. Spoiler alert. Warning. Spoiler alert. You have been warned. I love that mix of Fallout, Star and, Trek, Red yeah, Alert, and all yeah. that. But hey, uh, side note. And I'll keep my spoiler very quick because okay. this is what's leaning I will timestamp it for anyone, but yeah. here it is. Turn um, away for 30 seconds if you don't want to hear it. Go, Nick. The leader of the biggest Viking city in all of Daneland uh, is <clears throat> Um It is the gate to the rest of the Viking world. Um this the leader of this the city um is actually a black woman okay who was a widower um so a lot of people are thinking they just threw that in there to okay. throw some color into the it show seems, it seems inaccurate not necessarily to you or it isn't no it's it's yeah. not inaccurate to me i don't, oh, I, okay, I don't okay. think it is what i'm talking about a lot of people are saying that would never happen they just threw that in there uh, so people are saying oh no, they're trying to be woke by throwing in a yeah. racial except but if you think thing. about it okay the vikings went everywhere right and they took slaves they took women they took cattle they took everything they could so it was a good chance 
and she quite literally says in the thing that her husband fell in love with her and took her when they during a rating it's a i don't mean to like minimalize it but it's a pocahontas thing it's like a a a, pr a, a proud white power race invaded a smaller country someone within that power fell in love with a native and then now we're here and our young generation is calling it woke because oh they don't understand the potential historical accuracy that this might imply that's what you're saying mm -hmm. okay just wanted to paint that picture for everyone we're gonna move forward we'll do a deeper just leave a comment down below guys for anyone that listened to our spoiler if you'd like a deeper discussion about pop culture and being woke not making fun of it there it's a real definition look it up i said it before the spoiler but you're right nick i i get what you're saying and i agree and with you I like the that. other reason why a lot of people are saying it's woke is because how they are blatantly <clears throat> painting the christians in a bad light in oh, the but wow. during that time the christians painted themselves into a bad light there's, <laughs> there's a lot of historical context to justify what you're saying and it does not mean it's woke i yeah all right fair enough yeah i get it all right Come so, on. yeah let's, so, let's just, like crusades yo holy we messed crap up. We, we messed up <laughs> yeah a lot it's fair to say a lot of people and religions have messed up some people still are <laughs> Don't paint everyone in the same light until you get to know them, I think, is the good message we should leave with. And they actually cover that in the show. I love that. I love yeah. that. It makes me more interested to see it unfold, aside from the fact that my guilty pleasure is violent historical depictions. But this anyway. This is the one. Hey, this is the one. Let's get into and, it. And you, you learn the truth behind some childhood uh, songs that you sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. No, I do. I get what you're saying. I, would you like to share the opening of one of them, or should we move on? All right, there you go, guys. That was your tease. Uh, so, recommendation rating. Recommendation or... if you like medieval, uh, you, you like blood and gore you like swords and fighting and just that whole culture who doesn't if you do get out now i mean <laughs> we still love you if you're shy <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, but no no these 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 are fantastic uh this show was great i loved it like i said i'm waiting for the next season um i like this just as much as the original viking show which was a masterpiece i thought holy um, crap so i'm gonna put this one at a nine um because it was so short that's the only reason why it's getting a nine um i felt wanting left wanting more um but i thought they what they did they did great like i said Nick. they tried to stick historical they tried to keep with the even the accents the fighting styles they focused on the, the armor that they were using yeah you saw some leather and stuff but here no matter what anybody says leather was used quite a bit Nicholas. Uh, I don't do this often, <clears throat> but I'd like to make a point of it in the future uh, that e any of us, any of us nerds on our show should have the freedom to challenge <clears throat> someone's rating purely because I don't think we have maybe the best outline for how we should abide by our ratings. Okay. But... What I want to suggest to you is, is, is that a strong enough point in your opinion to take it down one full number from a masterpiece? I do. Okay. Um, because um, if they would have given us two more, two more episodes, do you feel they, it they needed could, it? Yes. Uh, there's, okay. there's some points. They, I okay. felt they rushed to try to get through the, the eight episode mark. Okay. That if they would have extended it by two episodes, you would have been able to get a little bit more backstory. You would have been able to get more um, feeling of the atmosphere of what was happening during certain times instead of it being rushed from one point to the next. Fair enough. They, because they were yeah. stuck on a certain time period, they had to mm -hmm. rush and condense stuff. And it suffered for it. 
Okay, and that's what that's what I want the discussion I want to have with anyone in our future recordings for this podcast is like you know um the number we give it is it justified when everything is so perfect and there's only one hang up is it a big enough hang up to pull it away from perfection and you're sticking by it in your mind that it can't get a 10 because there's some things within the unfolding of its story, at least at this first viewing, that you feel um, diminished its gloss and shine, if you will. So you stick and buy it, Nick's stick and buy it, 9 out of 10, but guess what, guys? Honestly, anything 6 or 7 above is still, it's still in, I think, all of our opinions, a recommended, like, check it out and but the fact that nick is giving you a nine is it's kind of one of those absolutely check it out unless you crazy don't like vikings like there's no reason not to check it out based on his rating and i'll i I leave everyone with that nick you agree with that okay okay uh just to switch it i remember it after shaking my head that people sometimes listen to this instead of watch it so i realized i had to say i agree (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> good on you sir we do need to practice a little more for the audio listeners Cause, only because no one no one hears my brain rattle yeah so. no, well no one sees your head shift that's true mm-hmm. <laughs> and i try to say air quotes when i actually make air quotes because not everyone's watching but anyway i digress okay. now I did do air quotes earlier, but I didn't call it out. So, uh, well, guess now you get a guess where those were. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> Fair enough. It's not yeah. a pass or fail test here. No, no, no. And I wasn't trying to call you out for not saying it either, but I appreciate you pointing it out, sir. Okay. I'm going to queue up the trailer for this next show because I feel like as I describe it, it may be a little confusing at first. This is the show you're watching? Yep. Here's my surprise in progress review because it's a show that is still currently airing. So it's not the full season's not done. It's not out, but it came out four weeks ago, roughly. So I'm going to lead with that. Give me one second because I didn't prepare for. A credit reading of what this is, but I definitely feel it's deserved. So, <clears throat> guys, the show I'm about to talk to you is, as I am looking for it, a 2022 original, and not just any original, <clears throat> friends. It is an epics original. Uh, I'd like to shout out the podcast whose review I first heard about it, who led me to check it out upon their recommendation. I reference them a lot. I love them deeply. Pop Culture Leftovers, they're a long-form podcast, three to four hours every week, once a week. They go in deep, they go in long, but they cover a lot of stuff. They're very vulgar. Don't listen with kids around. Often I say that about our show, but they don't censor themselves. But they're better for it because it's uh, they're hilarious to listen to. They recommended this show, and I went out and checked it. Now, I will preface this by also saying it's uh, a mystery horror or horror mystery thriller of a show. It's being released on a weekly basis, but they dropped the first three episodes on, I want to say, oh, I got to watch the next episode because it just came out, but um, late February. So this is like brand spanking new, literally came out less than two weeks ago. Actually, two weeks ago, they dropped the first three episodes. This is an Epix original. Now, if you guys don't know what Epix is, Epix is a streaming service much like Shudder, which is a horror-specific subscription service. It's very similar to any of those. It's, it's like Hulu or Netflix, but it's on the cheaper end because they don't have a large library. It's $6 a month. Now, here's the intriguing point I'll bring up before talking about it. Epics has a handful of original series 
A lot that I've been highly recommended to, another that I'll talk about that's Batman related, but we'll talk about that later. That's not either here nor there. Epics must have realized how small a niche they are that they they somehow got to deal with Amazon Prime. And the reason I say that is because during Pop Culture Leftover review of this show, uh, someone said, oh, I didn't. Um, the lead guy, Brian, said uh, you guys could probably find a free trial of Epics. Go sign up for it. It's only four episodes out there right now. Watch them all, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So I did that. Uh, mind you, I was at work and I listened to podcasts all night long at my job. And so I went and did the free trial. And then after my lunch break, I went back and found and listened, continued listening to their podcast. And the other guys on the show said, oh, I didn't get an Epics thing. I, I, I found it on Amazon Prime. And he was The lead guy, Brian, was like, what? So I did my research. I went to Amazon Prime and I'm like, holy shit, Amazon Prime actually has some kind of special deal with Epics, E-P-I-X, and currently eight of their original series on Epics are available in full on Amazon Prime. So I'm like, hot damn, sorry, Epics, going to cancel that free trial, going to hop on Amazon Prime and start watching. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. So... Long story short, let me review the show now because there are a handful of series I think you guys should check out from Epics. But now, surprise, surprise, I guess it's on Amazon Prime. What I'm going to say is now that you know that little tidbit, I threw that up front. So you'd be like, oh man, I don't want to get Epics. I don't want to pay six bucks a month. So you could do that if you don't have Amazon Prime. But if you do have Amazon Prime, plus, plus, it's available. So. <clears throat> Let me talk about it while I play the trailer. We'll play the trailer right here. It's a little lengthy. We'll play it and I'll talk about it. So, all right, um, guys, Epic uh, has put out an original show. Uh, the premise is unravel the mystery of a city in Central America that imprisons everyone who enters. <clears throat> Say what? As the residents struggle to maintain a sense of normalcy and seek a way out, they must also survive the threats of the surrounding forest. Now, I'm going to say right up front, first episode, you are going to get Stephen King vibes. Down to the small town aspect, crows in the air, the weirdness that some of the townsfolk exhibit. And the soundtrack to this film. I can't list the exact songs that are playing, but it's very classy, diner-esque, 80s, smooth rock, a little bit of Johnny Cash feel. The intro, I will say, at the beginning of every episode, there's a teaser, and then there's the credit intro. From executive producers of Lost, it promotes in this trailer, as you can see. Um, also, the Russo brothers that worked on Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War are involved. It's got a lot of, in my opinion, unknowns. Um, actors that I wasn't familiar with prior to this, but I will say hashtag... Uh, Paul Rudd, like not in this, but the lead father that's in this with the family who we are following that gets stuck in this town looks like a scraggly version of Paul Rudd. I'm not going to lie, but um, I would like to give credit where credit's due. The leads, at least for the main cast, we've got uh, Harold Perrineau, Catalina Sedina Moreno, Elon Bailey, who actually plays as the dad, but good lord, he looks like a Paul Rudd. Uh, Ricky He, Hannah Shermay, Sean Majumder, uh, little boy, Simon Webster. Don't know how much he's in, but he was a phenomenal little kid in this. Um, you guys have seen the gist of the trailer at this point, and I'm going to throw this out there. It looks intense. If you guys are watching right now, it looks intense. Um, the premise is 
what I said, but the scary thing about this is what happens at night. It's basically not spoiling anything, but in the first 10 minutes of the show, I got to stop. I got to, I got to turn, I got to switch off. got to stop sharing it because it's going to give away too much. But what, what I would like to say about it, (laughs) actually, you can watch the ridiculously long three minute trailer and still have no idea how good this is. Um, so there's this family, wife, husband, teenage girl, and little brother uh, in an RV driving cross country. They're trying to go camping, have fun, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, at the, the opening scene, there's this sheriff. who You find out he's the sheriff, and he's walking around the town, very small town, ringing a bell. And you're like, this is weird. Like, real creepy vibes. And you see the townsfolk all walking back into their homes. And it's not even, it's not really dark. It's just kind of like sunset, evening-ish. You know, sun's out, but he's ringing the bell. People are going back into their homes. Um, There's a weird, mysterious thing happening where at night, everyone goes back into their homes. There's this weird rock-like talisman hanging by everyone's front door. All of them seem to touch it for a moment as if some weird thing, you know, I don't know what, what it means per se. <clears throat> and then something really f***ed up happens in the first five minutes. I want to give one quick warning. I won't spoil anything in this review, but I will say if you have an aversion to uh physical gore and i don't mean like you see it happening but you see the remnants of blood and guts type of thing like it's not moving but you see dead body if you have an aversion to dead bodies uh this might not be the show for you i it doesn't happen a lot but in the first five minutes of the show you will see just a Brief spoiler warning, but there is a, I want to say between the age of 6 and 10, a little girl on a floor with her chest completely ripped open and she's dead. Like, it's a gory mess. They only show you that that moment for three seconds. She's already dead. You don't see it happen, but it's there. And my wife is super, super sensitive to children and horror movies and anything gory or violent towards kids. So I want to say that it's not an, a regular active thing in the show. It's just a three second scene, but it happens really early in the show. So just wanted to throw that out there because I want to recommend something and someone come at me and be like, oh my God, you made me watch something that's so effed up with kids in it. It's not that. It's really not that. It's a short, brief scene, but it kind of lays the groundwork for what to expect with whatever is going on at night. The premise is the townsfolk hide away in their homes because at night something comes out of the forest and anyone that's not in their home is likely to die a violent death. And that's kind of all you know. That's all we know. The other mystery is that anyone that comes across upon their town gets stuck and i don't mean physically stuck i mean whoa twilight zone stuck in a loop stuck you drive past the town on the road and you keep going straight you don't make any turns after a little while you come back across that town and you didn't turn (laughs) you didn't go backwards you didn't turn the town showed up again and you were stuck in an endless loop that brings you to this town. And that's where the show starts. That's where we follow this sweet family who discovers that they are the next victims to be stuck in this mystery town. And all we know in that first episode is that whatever it is comes out of the forest. They look human, but they're not human. And holy shit. This thing has some twists, some turns, some Stephen King mess. You don't know what's going to happen next. And I watched the first two episodes with my wife, and it was so late, and she is desperately waiting to watch the next two. And I looked online, and the fifth episode's already dropped. So, 
Guys, anyone that hasn't seen it yet, there are five full episodes of this. They run around 50 minutes, 45 to 50 minutes. And there's some violence, there's some blood, a lot of mystery, and a lot of... It's it's an original story written by the writers and directors for this. It's not based on a book as far as I can tell. I've looked. But it has super heavy Stephen King vibes. Um highly recommend right now i can't it's a review in progress because the season isn't finished but the two episodes slash four that i'm going to get into before the end of this week right now i'm giving the first two episodes a solid nine out of ten and the show is called from i think it was in the trailer you guys might have seen it i know i didn't say it up at the front but it's called from all episodes, it's an Epics original. You can watch it on Epics or you can watch it on Amazon Prime. It's all there. Super intriguing, super mysterious, and it it will give you chills. Sorry that was long-winded, sir. I, I might, I might sharp, sharpen up some of my points, but... That's, uh, I don't watch a lot of horror. Uh, I do more so because of my wife. I watched it on my own accord because my favorite podcast recommended it. So I checked it out. And then I'm like, I told my wife, honey, I want you to just watch at least the first episode. If you don't like it, I'm going to watch the rest of it and review it on the podcast. But if you do like it, I'll I'll wait and watch it with you. And she, we stayed up till 2 a.m. after I got off work when I told her that. She watched the trailer and she's like, I, I want to check it out. Boom. And my wife's a, like a horror fanatic, and she was hooked on the first episode, and we watched two, and we're waiting the next night or two to watch the rest of them. Boom. Anyway, to my horror fans out there, Nick, what what, what do we got next, sir? Um, If you're still with me, sorry, I know that I talked a bit. Um, I don't have anything new. I do have some stuff I dove into for the first time for myself. Um, there's some TV shows that I actually heard from people that I should give a give a go. Um, one is a Netflix original called uh, Raising Dion. I've heard about this, yes. Um, it's about this woman who loses her husband in a freak storm and finds out that her son has superhuman powers. And she's trying to figure out the best way to raise him without letting anyone know this so that they don't take him away. Um, and then it unveils a weird conspiracy. So, uh, Ooh. and they have a second season. I'm actually currently on. Um, I've heard yeah, that this, that's coming here. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting seeing this, uh, this take on a superhero. Uh, the kid's like eight years old, five, f- five, five, five to eight years old, doesn't understand anything, and all of a sudden has these powers where he can manipulate things with his mind, teleport, all those good things. And uh, it gets him into trouble, um, but he has to find out who he is to become the person he needs to be. Um, and it's uh, more than anything. The the mother in this is probably the the superhero having to deal with all that without knowing what the heck to do. But no, uh, right? <laughs> show's kind of cool. It's 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 cute. Uh, uh, I watched it with my kids, uh, and uh, they loved it. Um, it was just a different take on the whole superhero genre, um, and I really enjoyed it. I love that, dude. Uh, you saw the whole first season, then? Whole first season, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, what's your rating on that first season? Um, I do feel that it is aimed more towards uh, young adult kids to thing um, because some of the humor kind of aims that way. But uh, I would probably give this a solid 7.5. Okay. It's a solid recommendation, regardless. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wanted to check it out when I saw it, and it's just got Michael B. Jordan in it. Nice. 
Yeah, I saw um, that in the credits there. Yeah. Um, I it, it was fun. Um, but yeah, um, this is one you can watch with kids, so you don't have to worry about that. That's that's one reason why I recommend it. Anybody that wants to watch something superhero friendly for uh, you to watch with your kids, just be good. It's clean for the most part. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the other one I watched is an. Uh... All right. I'm going to preface this by asking a few questions, Joe. Oh, shoot. I'm here. Do you like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon type thing? Kung Fu, crazy, extraordinary things? <clears throat> Absolutely. Do you like stuff like uh, Matrix? Also, absolutely. Or the fighting scenes, how they're kind of over the top, and it like slows down and goes all around and all that good uh, stuff. Yes. And do you like Mad Max, the dystopian future that's just the world's destroyed and all that good stuff? I'm all here for that, dude. What all right, we now, got? What now, we got? Now cram them all into one show. No, oh, that's too much. Oh, overload. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Say again. So this show is called Into the Badlands. It's an AMC. Oh. Uh, TV series based off the book uh, Journey to the West. Um, and uh, I actually read the book, so that's why it was re recommended to me. Um, it's loosely based off of it. It's not exactly yeah, the same. Yeah. Am, um, is this the right trailer here that I'm pulling up? This is the right trailer. This okay. is in the future after nuclear war and all this. Uh, the okay. world's pretty much destroyed. Um, and the survivors mm -hmm. have kind of ros risen up and people have decided to take over to take over as rulers in certain areas and they're called barons and these barons have these specialized warriors that uh are quite literally kung fu masters and they train all their life to um, do one that, thing yeah. uh and that's that's to kill for their for their baron um but uh yeah no it 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 follows that character you just saw on the red coat named sunny um and uh it's a very bleak future um and yes those are poppy fields uh <laughs> yeah I see that um creators of smallville what yeah oh, I gotta, hold on hold on hold on you, you'll see some big names when you when you hold watch on it says pretty, pulp fiction Django and chain and creators of smallville oh a mix, yes yeah. mix of talent here and it has the feel of all of those. It's kind of weird. <laughs> That's an interesting, interesting thing, dude. Yeah, I like that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, in this future, uh, guns are outlawed. Okay. All right. All right. That's why you see people with swords and stuff like that. Yeah. Just as deadly if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, dude, it looks it looks good. Um, how much how much have you watched? What how much is out? It's it's been uh, out I for think, a while. I think it has three or four seasons. Um, and I'm just a few episodes in the first season. I just started watching this the other day. Oh, you are in early or young, uh, young into it, sir. Uh, it looks like it. It's ended 2019. Yeah. Yeah, it, it ended, but uh, every, everyone I've talked to has said it's really good. Um, yeah, it's a definite checkout series. Um, yeah. 32 episodes, three seasons, and they're roughly about the 40-ish minute mark for episodes. That's cool. Uh, where can we check this out right now? At, currently, where is it? Right now, I'm watching it on Netflix. On oh, Netflix, it was. It looks like it was originally AMC based on the trailer because it was a mm -hmm. an older trailer. Yeah, I know that's that's cool, dude. Hey, new thing on Netflix. Hello, on IMDb, it actually says watch on Netflix right here. So, that's oh, cool. nice. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, and they're listed as chapter instead of episodes. It says chapter four: Two Tigers of Dew Dragons, stuff like that. It's a 2015 series, guys. Uh, I'll, I'll give it a go. Like I said, it's got a lot of uh, a lot of faces you see big in movies and TV now. Uh, 
uh, Daniel, Daniel Wu. Daniel Wu. Nick Frost is in it. Martin Kasak. Kasakis. Emily Beecham. Uh huh. Uh, Some we got other bigger names here. Um, Louis Tan from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you said Nick Frost. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Lang's in here. Um, yeah, yeah, dude. There's a lot of a lot of faces in here. Dian Yu Wu looks like he's in the whole show. Sunny, thirty two episodes is the character he plays. Yeah, he's the main actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy we see on the trailer. Nice. Um, what? How? What do you give? Uh, do you have a general in progress review rating for how what you've seen so far? I. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this. Um, I'll give you an inside secret into Nick. Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> I I am a kung fu freak. I probably, a freak. probably the movies I've seen more than anything and watched more than anything is old kung fu movies. I, I like the fighting. I like all that. And, it, and anything... Del Toro, am I right? Ah, yeah. uh, well, I was I was thinking Kill Bill, Kill Bill ah. two, um, no. Del Toro. Yeah, no, no, it's it's just the whole. Uh, I've I've always I've always liked the kung fu, the fighting movies, and stuff like that. Jack Chan, Jet Li, uh, Bruce Lee, mm-hmm. the old Chuck Norris ones. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, sorry. I need to. I need to nerd card correct myself. I am so sorry. Yes, you do. Quentin Quentin Tarantino. I, I was. I was not going to call you out on it. I uh, appreciate that, and I can delete the whole moment where I said that. But I'll leave it in. To be honest, to be honest to our listeners, yeah. I screwed. No. Up. Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> because I'm a sucker for a kung fu movie, this one gets a nine from me. A nine, and the, scene, have, the fighting scenes are so fresh, so clean, so fresh, so clean. Alf, are you finished? Have you the, are you close to the end of season one yet, or not? No, I not just quite. started. I'm a few episodes in. Oh man, so you're just your hot take of the first few episodes is a nine. Oh, it. The only other show I could think that hooked me this hard was Prison Break. Oh, that's a tall order, sir. I shoot. Because I was one of those fools that got wrapped in hard, for good for good reason. But yeah, I I will. It's on Netflix. That's an easy click for me. I'll oh, yeah. give it. I'll give it a go, dude. <laughs> do we? Ha- do you have? Um, I know there's some bigger shows. We're kind of holding off on them. I I do want to since I, you just did one. I just want to do uh, a soft. A soft review, not a review in progress, because I've seen the whole thing. So I'm going to give my honest number take on it. But it's one our fellow co-host Ryan Coon has been dying to talk about. Um, and so for that, Hello Kitty I, Island Adventure. Ah, f- I know he's not here for that, huh? <laughs> uh, I had to sneak it in somewhere. I don't think that it'll ever get old, sir. As long as you find a way to sneak it in, I'll let you sneak it in. Whoa. <laughs> okay. The, the Legend, Legend of Vox, Vox Machina. Machina. A 2022 series. I, div- I have to review it at the very least. Uh, get a soft review. I won't go in deep. I'll keep it casual as it is. The show in question is... You won't go in deep like Scanlon? No, not like Scanlon. And to be fair, the show is super adult, so I don't want to go in deep unless I'm with Ryan. I don't well, want to go in deep unless I'm with him. Do we need to tell you <laughs> I hope he listens to this. <laughs> <clears throat> no, truly. Um, eh, hold on. I. I will because th- it's it's way too adult for me to like throw actual snippets in here, but I'm going to throw in the the widely received public trailer for it. Not the red band. Yeah, I mean, we could, I guess it doesn't matter. No, I'm kidding. I don't want to do that right now. We'll save that for Patreon. Oh, there's the red band trailer right front and center. Oh, I kind of want to. No, nah, it's fine. 
No, well, that's no, okay. We've we've reserved not going hard, <laughs> pun intended, not going hard with our channel because we want everyone to just at least hear the thoughts and opinions. And if you want a little bit more, you can pay for a little bit more. Patreon.com. <laughs> tell, 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 tell them to show and give us your review, dang it. I'm, all right, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. All right. Snow a little, sh- show a little snippet of just kind of what it looks like. At least the animations. There's the gore. He saw right there. Oh, head to cap. So the violence is there. Um, the one thing you're not hearing. Hold on. We need to fix a few things. Boop. I'm sorry. He didn't see that. We don't pre record our trailers at all, apparently. Uh, it's, I'm kidding. Uh, what you'll see is the animation style at the moment. So the animation style, fully animated, hardly anything CG, maybe a few moments depending on the circumstances. But by and large, um, it's gory. Uh, just in these little snippets, you can see there's drinking, there's innuendo, a lot of blood. And by a lot of blood, I mean okay. I'm going to stop showing because I need to. Get, I need to focus on the actual talking part here. <laughs> a lot of blood and, and dragon turds. Uh, blood, dragon turds, and if we're being honest, um, I will throw this out there. And I'm, I'm curious to hear Ryan's take on it because he he's in love with it as much as I think I am. Um, I thought when I saw the first episode, uh, Amazon Prime does this funny thing where some episodes in a show can have a higher adult rating and the, and it's kind of like individual episodes are rated like the whole season might be like a oh PG13 or 16 and older but then like one individual episode might be so extreme that it says 18 plus and I I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I haven't rewatched it yet since I finished the season uh but I'm pretty sure Episode one was rated 18 plus uh, because of violence, language, and yes, nudity. I'm talking, there's a penis on screen. Don't uh, worry, it's just, it's just a gnome penis. Regardless, there's it's, it's Game of Thrones worthy, but animated, I'd like to say. And much like Game of Thrones... It kind of watered down on this on on some of the more extremes like nudity. I will praise it for the fact that the violence kind of never let up. Although there's some slow spots through the first twelve the twelve episodes I watched, um, it never shied away from the gore, the actual violence, head decapitation, smashing bodies, bodies being ripped apart. Amazing. Um, what I'd like to say though is that. Um, this show, The Legend, I guess I didn't say it up front. I know, I really, I'm going to have to edit that in. <laughs> the the legend, legend of Vox, Vox Machina. Machina. Um, it's actually, an ama- oh, there's, okay, there is another season coming. Uh, but there's only 12 episodes on Amazon Prime. It's an Amazon Prime series. It's created by um, a, uh, Nick, maybe you can help me on the name of the group. It's a D&D group on YouTube. Critical role. Critical um, role. DM'd by Matt Mercer. Um, critical role, you'll know, has a whole bunch of uh, uh, very well known characters that play throughout their DD sessions. Uh, <sighs> and everyone, everywhere from Joe Magnello to um, to uh, Will Wheaton. Um, they've they've had a whole bunch of different people on that. I was going to say, you're, you're, you're listing off some bigger names that people will know for sure and i'm guessing from critical role a handful of the voice actors are from a lot of that group i have not watched a lot of critical role on youtube but i do know that a lot of those folks uh created vox machina the story and that's why i'm going to keep this light i don't want to get too deep i want ryan to give us his fandom in it and we'll talk with him on his feelings um what I will say is it's a group of misfit uh, swords for hire story. Um, you've got your brother and sister. You've got an, uh, an elvish girl with magic. Um, you got your brother and sister. You've got, I think, 
I think they're elvish. Uh, you got an el another elvish girl who's super in magic. You've got your she's Drax a druid. Uh, there you go, and you got your Drax character. Sorry, <clears throat> Grog, love him. Um, he he's simple minded in a different way. I wouldn't say I, I'd say uh, similar, very similar in how he acts. Uh, often. A lot of takes a lot of things literally, kind of like Drax and Guardians of the Galaxy, kind of similar in that in that sentiment. Um, then you got your Scanlan and your uh, the the little one Pike, Pike. I think. Yep, you got two gnomes. One's kind of a saint uh, speaking to the light. She uses a lot of like holy. She's the holy one in she's the group. A cleric. cleric, yep. She uses a lot of like healing and stuff like that. Uh, Scanlan, well, I mean, he's the bard, the gnome, and uh, he, he's our um, Peter Dinklage in the group. So I was trying uh, to think of his Game of Thrones name. <laughs> Scanlan is the class <laughs> druid. Ah, I was thinking more about the caricature of them more than his i mean he has a musical instrument and sings with magic but also he's the sex addict uh he likes screwing around with any maidens in any town and tries to hook up with everyone and he's not particular he's bi he likes his men and women any way he can be tantalized so sex addict i think is accurate <laughs> nick <laughs> um but anyway, so you got your brutes, your big guys, and, and there's unique relations between all of them. There's unique friendships between all of them. There's heart. There's subtle romance. Um, Keyleth and uh, Vex or Vax. I forget. Uh, Liam and Lori. Okay, uh, Vax. The, the twins, the brother-sister twins, they're called... Uh, Vex Alia and Vax Silden, uh, but for short, Vex and Vax is often confused. But um, uh, Vax is the the guy, I think. Uh, but anyway, he and Keyleth, the 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 female druid, as uh, Nick put it, there's a little something going on between them. Scanlan's always hitting on everyone. Uh, Grog, the 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 gentle giant I call him, um, has strong affection for Pike, the little female gnome, and they're like best friends. Um, and the the unique guy out of all of them, Percy, um, gunslinger, the gunslinger. He has a unique disposition in the story, and I don't want to go super deep into it. There's something. Something that ripped apart his childhood, an ongoing vendetta towards reclaiming what was lost. Literally, the dude lost everything, and I'll just keep it as vague as that because there's a lot more to it. But he has the sickest six-shooter. He's got something demonic that's just latching onto his soul in the background and there's a mystery behind him and this whole group of misfits is just there's they care about each other and they're just trying to survive but episode one there's drinking there's sex there's violence there's gore it's like oh my gosh and i'm only slightly let down that i get sort of sort of it's 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 a, it's a, it's a side note i'm only slightly let down that they didn't maintain that the extremeness of episode one, but in all fairness, the creative they did. no, just in other ways. It, sure, sure. Nick, can I just? I know you read up on it, but can I pick your brain? Did you watch any of it? Yeah. How much? All of it. Well, what the fuck? I thought I was reviewing this solo. No, we were waiting to do the review for uh, good, good old Ryan. I, you're right. You were doing a light review. I was. I thought I was. <laughs> I 
I'm trying to. Or we'll we'll you, stop. You found that rabbit hole and do yeah. run on in. I know. Okay, we're 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 pull. Uh, okay, we're pulling back. Nick knows way more than I thought he knew, and uh, screw me, damn it. Okay, um, we'll give our numbers, and then we'll rally up Ryan, and maybe we'll do a special episode just about it. I think Ryan deserves at least that much, and I think the depth of this show could warrant uh, like a half hour, one hour it's special. Yeah. I think it could warrant discussion because there's a it's such a beautiful creative conglomeration from a group of individuals that they do this for fun. They they are role playing content creators, and this is kind of an original story coming from the group of people known as Critical Role on YouTube, and they manage to get this put into like the mainstream world <laughs> and through, it, through crowdfunding through crowdfunding nick do you have any stats on that or you just want to leave it at that and we'll go deeper later oh we'll go deeper when ryan's here okay I'll, I'll get a full write-up of what they what they did for it okay sweet all right guys uh look forward to that in the next week or two depending on when that we can get ryan on for this discussion um but nick I'm just, I'm going to lay this out here. Uh, and I think we'll move on from TV talk after this. I think we need to because of how long this episode is going. But I want to give our listeners just an idea of first off, check it out. Go into it full blown knowing it's an adult cartoon. Do not watch this with your kids. I don't just, that's, that's our recommendation. How you parent is up to you, but. This now, is this is a, a rated R affair, if you will. Now, if any of you are D and D players, tabletop, uh, know that this is very based off of D and D. This is in obviously Matt Mercer's world, uh, but they lean heavily into all the wonderful tropes we love in our games. Um, but uh, yeah. Be 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 wary that the the bard does try to seduce everyone, and it comes out in the the the, the, the show <laughs> graphically. <laughs> Episode one, you're gonna see more than you thought you were, and just uh, as an upfront, like in your face thing. And I think they did that just to be like, blam, here's what might happen, and then we hope to carry you through. A nice, deep, wonderful, heartfelt story, and I, they they covered all of it. No, I th- I feel like they did for a season what, one. And what is that gnome doing to my daughter? Nothing, mother. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's so I want to reference a lot more. I want to go deeper. And guys, this this review is a teaser for a future episode. It will be publicly available on YouTube and where podcasts are found in the coming weeks once we get into it i personally and i I don't know i'd be surprised if i hear different numbers but for me level depth heart uh the viscosity of violence um uh violence and sex and and vulgarity is nothing without heart and uh holy shit this show delivered all the heart in every category with all the previous categories just being the dressing to this fantastic feast that I had for an animated show. And because of that and the acting and the soundscape that I was led into, I give it a 10 out of 10 Nice for, for an animated series on Amazon Prime. Nick, do you feel comfortable giving a rating right now? I do feel comfortable, but I'm not going to do it. Oh, shit. He's I, I, I want to wait for Ryan. But I will tell you, watch it, and I'll give you a score. <laughs> Nick approves of my recommendation to watch it at the very wait, least. At the very least. I'm, I'm going to embrace my inner Italian. Do it. I, I approve. Do it. 
Chef's goose. Anyway, guys, that's gonna Nick. If you oblige and and are cool, this wraps up our TV talk. Yeah. All right. Yes, well, you know, I think well because this is part of one episode, or I'm pretty sure it, it, it has to be or will be. We're gonna wrap everything oh, up fuck. with a little bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> Some censorship uh, and a little bit of this <clears throat> game bits. Welcome. Oh, shit. We have a whole other section. To oh, get, sorry. It doesn't have to. Well, <laughs> you know, go ahead. You want know, to wrap up? I mean, we're at two hours. Or close let's to make, let's hours. make it quick. We got the five dollar foot long of episodes here. Let's do this. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm going to give right now a review in progress, if you will, because the game is so deep that I'm about to talk about uh, that I just I haven't felt or experienced the whole breadth, breadth or thickness of what this is. <laughs> and this is another one that we'll probably get another deeper review later, because I know another one of our cast members are deep into it, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another cast member has 30 hours into this uh, from the last time I talked with him. Shout out, Ryan. Um, we are talking about none other than From Software's next hard, tough as nails, damn it, I need to buy another controller game experience in their souls like affinity. For games, Elden Ring. Elden Ring came out less than a week ago. It is, for all intents and purposes, their open world first time entry into taking their Dark Souls style brutality of gameplay into a different direction, if I will. And I'll preface it by saying, um, combat and the expectation of combat aligns perfectly with all their previous entries. From Software is known for Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which was honestly actually one of their first entries official first entries into a more open world style, but still maintaining a very Dark Souls combat style. And now Elden Ring, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, Demon Souls is a prequel to Dark Souls, right? Did, are they're, they're responsible for that? Uh, they, they are responsible for it, but I don't know if it's a prequel. Okay, well, um, I won't lay that into stone, but Demon Souls, Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3... Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, and now Elden Ring. And uh, one philosophy that they always state in media and press releases is that every entry in their uh, portfolio of games is to always outdo or improve upon their previous entry. So, the combat... Uh, has kind of stayed true to what they have now been labeled as. Is it's now that their game Dark Souls is now been treated as a subgenre of game. When we talk about types of games, we say, "Oh, it's a." Uh, like with platformers and side scrollers, sometimes we say Metroidvania is in itself not a game. <laughs> it's become though a conglomeration of two game types, you know, procedurally generated side scrolling, puzzle solving, hard to play through type games. Not always hard, but uh, Metroid games and Castlevania games have carried these characteristics and a lot of games that emulate the both of those have 
been now labeled as Metroidvania. Metroidvania. So, uh, Souls, Dark Souls, has also now carried the weight of becoming a subgenre of game that people enjoy, love, and hate. It all comes down to now when a game fulfills the combat levels and skill levels that you find in a Dark Souls game can now be called Souls-like. Just like you say, Rogue-like, Metroidvania-like. Those are subgenres of something that's come before it. Souls-like is now a type of game that has a lot of depth in its combat, a lot of challenge, and in a lot of these games, there's several other things about it that make it that, but like the big keys uh, in this, in it from my, and this is coming from a first time player. I played Dark Souls 1 recently in preparation for Elden Ring coming out. Not because I expect it to be exactly the same, but I just knew from all the things I've heard and read that this was their next game, but it was an open world version of what they're used to. So I was like, okay, so there's a lot of expectation that this is going to be hard and brutal. So I tried out Dark Souls. Didn't play a lot into it, but I have learned and through my own research uh, gained the understanding that these games don't have a difficulty setting. There is no easy, medium, hard, hardcore, legendary. The game is as hard as it's ever going to be, no matter if you put two hours into it or 2,000 hours into it. The difficulty doesn't change. Um, And for Souls games, they're pretty linear in design. You go straight forward, and a lot of people rage quit because with Dark Souls games... There, there's not an open-ended direction to go in. You go through dungeons, you go through bosses, and at some point it gets so hard you can't get past a boss, and a lot of people quit because there's nowhere else to turn. Now, the interesting thing in that, I did not try Sekiro Shadow Side twice. I know Matt played a lot. I think a few of our other hosts here have played it before. I know that introduced different elements about that kind of gameplay. But what I've heard is Elden Ring is the first time they've gone in a a very different direction with the management of that difficult skill level in their combat. I will say this. I've put personally 12 hours into the game. The combat is crazy it it is rewarding if you are willing to give it time and practice or even in this sense go through grinding because the difference in the thing they introduced here with this game is it's it's not linear you're not locked in nick i think that's kind of one of the key factors with elden ring uh, one of the key factors why I think more people will give this a shot than than a Dark Souls game. Like, if you've been a hardcore Souls fan for the last five years uh, and you recommend a Dark Souls game to a friend, they might be like, nah, no thanks. But Elden Ring, it's from the same creators. This might be the first time a Souls fan might be able to recommend a game from software from software and say, Hey, this is a different tag. It's still brutal. It's still challenging, but it's a, it's a little different. It's open world. It might be a little more forgiving. If you give it a shot, the reason I say forgiving is you can go one way, come across the boss and just absolutely get slaughtered instantly and not be able to go any further. You're not gridlocked in that direction, Nick. You can be like, all right, screw it. So, head, head east and you go and you get slaughtered again well shoot all right let's go south the point is you're not locked into being forced to try to get through the one unbeatable boss you're not good at these light reviews are you 
Ah, uh, you just dive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know that premise was better saved for when Ryan's here. <laughs> or, <laughs> although I would have taken the spotlight from him talking, uh, I'll, I'll I'll wrap it up here. I get I gave a a, a premise to kind of describe my experience. It's my first time playing something from them, uh, and I tried Dark Souls. And I didn't hate it, but it's not something. I, it's something I would have dropped very quickly, especially with that never being able to get further until you just get good. And that's kind of the meme online with Dark Souls games: get good. Yeah, I haven't played any of the Dark Souls series because I'm not a masochist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but here's where I I, I would encourage the the trying of at least you know you regardless of your past apprehensions of the previous series because the the, the things i want to say about this in short like shorten it up right now and i'll say one one real quick thing though go ahead in the last year i've gone through four controllers snapping them in half because i get pissed at playing first person shooters what do you think a game like that will do to it uh what what fps games call of duty Destiny. You've broken controllers over Destiny? Yeah. Oh, well, then don't even try Elden Ring. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I will, I'll be honest. I'm like, if, if your controllers are that fragile during your Destiny gameplay, yeah, I don't know. Buy a super cheap Mad Cats controller before doing Elden Ring. I'd still say try it and for this reason. The reason I'm about to say the review part here. I've never been interested in a Souls game ever because just the, the difficulty. I don't even care about the lore. I don't care about the, glore, the the prettiness of it or the story. I'm not interested in the torturous, tormentuous, tumultuous experience of just being slaughtered over and over again until you get good. Uh, there's a funny video on YouTube I'll link down below that I think explains the Souls experience perfectly because it explains the perspective of why people love it versus why someone will hate it. <laughs> and I'm not going to discuss that here. I'll talk to Ryan. We'll have a discussion with Ryan about why you'll love it or hate it. But the challenge is there, but the freedom to explore the world that's there is so vastly different from a Dark Souls game. The other thing I'd like to praise it for, and I don't know how deep the lore really goes when it comes to George R. R. Martin's involvement, but they label him in the credits as being the, the lore guy that literally, from software, made the game and the creatures, and he came in and added the spice of lore to it. There's definitely a hardcore Game of Thrones feel to the whole world as a whole, but don't don't paint it in that corner. It's it's Lord of the Rings meets Game of Thrones. It's dark, deep, nasty, gigantic bosses, unrelenting foes. And I've only touched 12 hours of this, guys. I've heard that even 30 hours of gameplay, which Ryan has under his belt, is only scratching the surface. I'm still in the opening area, which is a gigantic map. And I went ahead and spoiled it for myself. I Googled how big is the map. I wanted to see it real quick. And I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. no, It's it's 10 times bigger than the starting area you're in. Oh. 10 times bigger. There's snow, volcanoes. There's some, it is. I, no, I kind of get worried when you say that uh, George R. R. Martin helped with everything. Why? Because he hasn't finished his stupid book. No, it makes me think it's going to have midgets and incest. No, none of that so far. I've put 12 hours in. I haven't seen any of that, but ha 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 ha. Yes, I get your humor, sir. I hope everyone else does too. But um, visually, the game is striking. I'm playing it on an original Xbox One from eight years ago, and there is frame rate stuttering. 
I've heard other people say on current PCs they see some stuttering. So, like, the only real criticism of the game is a little bit of the hardware versus software. Some people are, are having a little stuttering. Some people aren't. A lot of people are recommending play it in 1080p. Like, if you have the option to, to force it into 1080 your frame rate will be a solid 60, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't care because I play on a 27-inch monitor. I don't need 4K on a 27-inch monitor. So that's my argument. <clears throat> when I get next gen, which should be soon, Lord willing, uh, I will update you guys on my feelings about the frame rate. But the game, the one thing that's different about this, other than it being challenging and it, is the simple fact that this this game, like Dark Souls games, doesn't hold your hand. There's no tutorials. I mean, there is a tutorial, but it doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't say, hey, do this, do that. Uh, bro, I just want to say, like, this type of game is not usually my cup of tea, but for whatever reason, and I, I think I think it's the open-endedness, the open aspect, the just... Go wherever you want, whenever you want. There's no level gating. It's like, walk too far this way, meet some guys you can't handle. Bam, you're slaughtered. <laughs> start over, not start over, but, you know, like, uh, revive at last checkpoint, What you know, whatever. And But just that it's, there's a, it's amazing. I want to say it's amazing what they did here. They, they took a game, um, a type of game that, they're famous for that's super challenging when it comes to combat and then they also added this insane open world depth dude there's like there's no markers on your map when mm -hmm. i said they don't when i said they don't hold your i mean there, there are markers when you when you find something significant storyline or otherwise a marker is made on your map but while you're exploring there's no markers. There aren't these side quests that, ah, Breath of the Wild, Zelda, here's 20 different places you can go and hit your checklist. There's no checklist. There's no checklist. Instead, the game gives you markers. They It gives you waypoint markers, different symbols, a skeleton, a warrior, a plus sign, and you get to decide yourself what those mean, and you get to place them on the map, where you think something significant should be remembered. So if there's like a, a, um, a catacomb, a cave, or a boss that was too hard for you, you couldn't beat it, you know what I do? I take the skull icon, and I place it on the map right where that is, and I'm like, I'll come back later, and I go somewhere else. Or never return. Or never return. <laughs> However you want to deem those icons. And so some people might feel with that, with the lack of direction, that that's super frustrating. But for someone who's played a lot of open worlds and had a litany, you know, 20, 30 side quests just constantly sitting in your backlog of things to do, this is one of those breath of fresh air directions that you just never expected to see in an open world game. There is a main storyline here. Uh, and I've heard it's, it's roughly, if you're really flipping good and super skillful at your dodging and attacking, even though enemies are brutal, theoretically, you could get to the end of the story in about 30 hours. Most people are taking 60, 80, and sometimes 100 plus hours before they even finish the main storyline because... There's just so much leveling up, and the leveling up system is pretty interesting and unique, and I'll talk about that later, but there's no cap. There's no level cap. Uh, when you get enough points, we'll call them experience points, but they it's called runes in the game, and it's both the currency for items, and it's also your experience points. It's spent the same way across the board. Every enemy you kill earns you X amount of runes. So it's kind of like experience points, but you also spend it like cash. It's kind of weird. But in the leveling up system, when you have X number of runes, you can raise attribute points 
your main attributes, you know, strength, dexterity, charisma, whatever, like you would. Or you could go buy armor for 500 runes. You know, it like I said, it's it's a weird concept. It works like currency, but it also is used to level you up. And every character level equals one attribute point increase. So if I raise my strength up one point, I'm one level up. So that's all I'll say is like, it's interesting. It's unique. It's fun. Uh, I went with Vagabond armor. Uh, sorry, a uh, shield sword warrior, a little slow, but heavy on the, on guarding. And I started at level nine and I'm level 20 after 10 hours of gameplay. Um, theoretically, you, I guess the cap is 99, kind of like Elder Scrolls on any attributes. You could get your strength all the way to 99. And if you get all of all the attributes up to 99 each, you could theoretically get up to level 700 something. I guess there's no cap. So you could endlessly grind if you want to. But regardless, I don't know right now. I can't give it a 10 because I don't know what the long-term journey is for me in this. I don't know if I'm going to get to the end or if I'm going to give up. But for everything it has, everything it offers, and how nonstop, no matter how long I play, I'm always finding something new, even though I'm slaughtered a dozen times. I'll just be like, all right, I'm done. Let me turn around and go somewhere else. I still find new stuff all the time that I can get through. And for that, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The 10 I'm reserving for how I feel after I've given it the you know, all my time. that Well, whatever time I feel like expending to get to the end of whatever the main storyline is. I feel like it deserves a 10. It's getting nines and tens across the board critically and commercial, you know, critically commercially. But I'm personally giving it a nine out of 10 for it being one of the most amazing, brutal experiences I've ever had. I give you a nine out of 10. Thank you for that, Nick, because we're not all perfect. And um, there's obviously a point out there that I'm missing or short on. <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, as Nick mentioned, I don't know if it'll make it in the cut or if I ended up cutting it out, but I was longer winded than intended, and this is supposed to be a light review, and I'm waiting for Ryan to give us his perspective. Which he just got so gung ho about it, it was it, his his, his review will be so much shorter than mine. <laughs> the conversation. No, but the conversation had back and forth what well, could potentially go longer. No, if you don't know this about Ryan, he's played all the Souls games. I've I've heard this. Yes. Uh, I, I, he's mentioned that to me, I believe. And I think that's why he told me he was so excited to get into this. Well, we, we were also going to cover the, um, the release of Destiny 2, but we're going to put a hold on that. Um, it's just... It's been good. Get out there, play it. It is a whole different game, um, and definitely worth the play. It's Nick. How it's, about you? How about you tease uh, the statement we talked about, like w- how you feel about where Destiny's at in a single statement, as a tease for um, why you should jump in. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, it's. It's where we've wanted it to be for all these years, and it's finally there. Um, That's perfect, dude. And yeah. it feels like a completely different game. <clears throat> if you were burnt out on what Destiny was, um, this this is a good point to get back into it. Come sure. back. It's a comeback yep. recommendation right yep. now. And a teaser for our next week's talk. We will dive in deeper. Hopefully, I can get a few more hours into the game, into the expansion, and hopefully, I can rally up our damn red ginger, Matthew. Or, yeah, or you set me up to play with you. So. Oh, that you no, know, that too. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so we will have more to say about that and the other game, hopefully, in the next week, guys. 
So, anyway, we've gone long in the tooth, super long episode this week. Uh, just me and Nick trying to cover all our bases, trying to review what we could. Um, uh, not much to say here other than thanks for watching and li- or and or listening where podcasts and video YouTube forms are. Uh, guys, this has been episode one. 22 122 nick we've hit 122 sir Mm. i was hoping for a little bit more of a hot damn out of you but i guess that's what we're gonna get at 2 (laughs) a.m it's 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 more of a oh people put up with this long (laughs) true true i should be making more narcissistic jokes like that (laughs) myself (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right good but hey anyone that is uh, sticking around and listening thank you for watching and or love listening. you guys we, we love everyone that's here except for you I, I i don't know what's going on there Ed, but just you though whoever you yeah. are just just the you just the one you out there Someone's gonna be watching this and all of a sudden they're gonna be like, what the they're, fuck gonna, did I do? they're gonna feel super guilty. What? What are you talking about? I love you guys. Ugh. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> hey, tweet us or email us, guys. We'll we'll read it on yeah. the show. If there's anything you want us to review, um, TV, movies, games, let us know. We'll we'll right. cover it. Recommendations and or suggestions are always we, welcome, guys. We, we we actually have been wanting it for a while for people to recommend stuff they want us to go over. That way we can know not only that, that way we can go over not only the stuff we love to do, but the stuff you guys love. So um that's why we do this. We want to spread our uh, word of nerd, our our joy of gaming and joy of everything we 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 do, and. Why not also throw it our way too? Get input from you guys. So throw it our way as well, friends. Well, Nick, I think all that's left to do is bid our friends a fond farewell for the week. So, guys, this has been your nerdy essentials. And As always, we'll see you on the other side. Oh, I sunk that up so nicely with you, Nick. Thank you for not faltering and holding off. I thought about it. Ah, you did. You did.